Hey everybody, um, <clears throat> so uh, I, uh, I need to re-upload a video. I did a boo-boo, I used some copyrighted music. Um, so I'm just going to say a little thing about this. Um, so, you know, I typically, in my videos, I typically use a lot of, uh, like, video game music because people like Capcom or uh, whoever is not going to go around and flag a bunch of videos of people playing the new Silent Hill because they want to promote their game and they, you know, they, um, they want to promote that content. But I also use, like, um, I do use the YouTube audio library sometimes. I think their music is pretty boring. Um, but it's like elevator music, background music anyways. But I, I also use, um, I, I try to use like emerging artists like um, I go on places like SoundCloud, you know, um, and uh, and then uh, use uh, people who aren't like big artists to like promote them, you know, or whatever. Um, and usually they have something, they'll have like a disclaimer in their music where they say, you can use my music uh, in your video, just give me credit. Um, and they call it Creative Commons, where if you're a creative, if you're like a songwriter, or if you're a, you make videos or whatever, you're giving other creatives permission to use your content. Like I do it on my videos, where you know I give permission to other people to use my video and edit it or whatever and do things with it if they give me credit. So. Um, <clears throat> But then, like with music, sometimes what happens is that uh, a, a, an artist will, one of their songs will kind of like blow up or something and you see it in a ton of YouTube videos. And then people, companies like uh, DistroKid will come around and flag every single, like they'll buy the rights to the music and flag every single one of those videos, just go around like there's job listings where they're looking for people to go through YouTube videos that are kind of popular so that they can flag them and get some of the ad content, the, the, the revenue from videos. So I don't make, you know, money from my videos. It's just that it's offensive to me and I won't support it because YouTube is supposed to, they have like a, a checker when you upload your video it's supposed to tell you whether something is copyrighted or not, or whether your video is going to get flagged. Um, you know, like, and they also recently changed their policy, it looks like, to where if you get copyright claimed, um, it's not copyright flag. Copyright flag is a different thing. It's like if you went and uploaded the Avengers movie, you know, the latest Avengers movie to YouTube, they would give you a copyright flag and then you get, or a copyright strike. And then three of those, and you get you get your channel taken down. But a copyright claim is just where, like, oh, you use my music in your video. So, uh, but they give every single penny of ad revenue to whoever makes the claim, and you can't even really dispute it. It doesn't seem like. Um, so, anyways, um, you know, I just I, I re-edited the video. I put. Um, I spent a lot of time on this video. I think it's a pretty good one. It's one of my newer videos. So um, I, uh, I just re-edited it with some YouTube music so that nobody could ever copyright claim it again. So it's boring elevator music, but it's uh, safe. So so anyways, that's all I'm going to say about that. No barking. No barking. I know. I know you heard a dog. I know. I know. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> All right, well, here, here's the video. Hey everybody, I'm uh, working on my Night Haunts. Uh, these guys, I've actually played a few games of Warcry with them already. And um, the uh, Spirit Hosts are absolute beasts. I love them. And my Night Haunts are definitely my favorite Age of Sigmar uh, army. But um, yeah, I... Uh, I used kind of a lot of like uh, speed painting hacks to get these guys to where they're at, to where I'm happy with them. Um, you know, if there was ever an army that begged to be airbrushed, it's definitely these guys, because uh, airbrushing just really makes a quick, really quick job of ectoplasm. But uh, but yeah, I use some other stuff. I use like oil paints and uh, you know like all kinds of different stuff. 
So anyways, yeah, let's uh, do some painting. All right, so uh, I'm working on my night haunts for um, Warcry. Uh, I've actually played a few games with these guys already and they're already my favorite um, Warcry Warband. I painted a bunch of these guys before, just some little troops and chain rasps. Uh, bang out a lot of them really quick with the airbrush. And you know, it's pretty close to the card art. So I think I'm just gonna stick with that. I mean, I like how it looks. So uh, I'm gonna start with some, I'm gonna give them some ghostly blue kind of flesh tones. These guys are mostly just flesh, you know? Or they're just, I don't know, swirling masses of ectoplasm. So, yeah, I've got a few colors of model air here. Um, I'm going to start with the dark blue. And, and I'm just going straight on black. So it's going to be pretty dark. Airbrush thinner. You want it to be about like uh, two percent, you know, like milk uh, two percent consistency. Put it through your airbrush. I think you know Vallejo Model Air is the best for airbrush, but it's it's just a little bit too thick for me. For my harder and steam bag, it's just picky. Okay, working my way up. Uh, can't really tell light blue, pale blue. These look like the same color. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with pale blue. And yeah, I'm not really, you know, worried about getting colors like color mixing too much at this point you know just kind of working my way up from dark to light get my shadows in there and I want my shadows to be ghostly you know like I don't want anything to be black on these guys like even you know under them in the deeper recess shadows I want that to be like a blue because they're supposed to be kind of see-through you know they don't really have any mass that blocks out the sun So I think next I'm going to try some of this uh, green gray. This is like a, an, this is like a, a verdigris color. This is model color, you know, it's a little bit thicker than model air. So definitely going to have to thin it down. I just dumped the, uh, the other color and then some quick change, you know, um, dinner in here. 
but it's definitely getting lighter. A little more of this. Okay, that's a lot. Didn't need that much, but that's the right color. Okay, so I think that's going to be it for my airbrush. Um, so these guys got a little bit of splatter on them. Not from the airbrush, but from, well, yeah, from the airbrush, but <laughs> never mind. So anyways, uh, I'm going to touch up their black a little bit and use some B3 Daimler black just straight out of the pot. And you know, like this part, the transition where it's changing to blue, uh, for now, I actually want my darkest darks to be up here on the um, like highest highlights, <laughs> if that makes sense. Because I want, I want this to be nice and dark and then I'm gonna come in and sort of re-highlight later. I'm gonna do some edge highlighting with another color just to make, give it that ghostly glow on, you know, black that the night haunts are kind of known for. I really like this color, this green gray, verdigree. Let me keep going with that. Um, these guys have a lot more green in them, you know? I, uh, I mean, it's, they don't need to be the same, but uh, I kind of like this color a little better. Anyways, yeah. Uh, so, okay. Actually, go use a bigger makeup brush. Um, so I'm just gonna kinda go around, dry brush a little bit, get these little wispies. But you know, mostly just on their uh, <clears throat> on like the tips of their tails and stuff, and like their little beaks. And uh, I'm gonna switch to. Uh, larger makeup brush to get these guys. So makeup brushes are great for doing dry brushing on, you know, big things like this.
Yeah, I'm really digging this kind of uh, OSL kind of look where object surface lighting, where the um, the ghosts sort of make it look like everything is glowing around them, you know? And I don't really want to lose that. I'm trying to decide, like, if the skeleton, if I want to do something else with the skeleton, or... Might um, hmm. see what this looks like on this base. Still haven't made up my mind about what to do with these guys. I think. Okay, well I am going to get some, I'm going to use some of this Eldritch Green and then just do a little bit of that on the backs of uh, these guys. That's how, that's how I get these ones and I like it. these you know got to this point last night went to bed got up this morning like did my had my cup of coffee did you know paid bills like wrote emails did all that busy work kind of stuff and the whole time I was kind of thinking about what I wanted to do with these guys next um, so I have some ideas um, <clears throat> so I really dig the the OSL kind of lighting effect, where this light is sort of coming off these, you know, with these ghosts and then lighting up their bases, but I don't want them to, the bases to look blue. So I think what I want to try first is I want to try just putting some pigments down. Um, and you know, like this might be just it. This might, this might just be the last thing that I do to these guys. But there's a couple other things I was thinking about doing too. But so what I want to do is I'm going to start at the edge and then kind of work my way in so that it looks like um, that light is sort of casting down on the, like around this dirt, you know, and then sort of lighting it up. Um, Cause if I can, if I can keep the um, keep the the ghost as like a you know a light source and then put a ghostly glow on everything and not really uh, so I have um, I I have other you know I have like a brown pigment that I'm going to put down on the ground and these are just pan pastels it's just it's pigments you know they're just in a pan sort of like makeup. Kind of. Um, you could definitely use a makeup brush to put the stuff on. But then I also have some I have some I have some brown and I have some gray. So I'm gonna put the gray down on the rocks. And it's okay if there's still a little, you know, blue. And like I can put it down on these gravestones and stuff. But I have another idea for that. If that, if I'm not happy with how these uh, gravestones look and the skeletons, so I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna do these bases kind of all around with some pigments, and then I'm gonna varnish. And then the varnish really knocks down the pigments. It, it dulls them down a lot. So we'll see what they look like after that. 
All right, so took everybody outside, gave them some varnish, and then you can see how it just really, you know, dulls down the pigment, sort of makes them settle in the recesses and stuff. Uh, so now what I want to do is um, I want to put some rust on metal. Um, you know what? Yeah. So I have some other guys that are kind of in the same stage and I want to do like rust on them and stuff. Um, these guys need some of the Eldritch Green on their backs. And then, um, but so, okay. So first off, I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing just real quick. And I'm going to use some of this uh, P3 Gun Corpse Brown. Um, and I just want to get like their the uh, staffs, you know, like their these uh, these wood parts. Before I start doing some oil painting stuff. But I'm going to leave the wood pretty dark because I've decided that these guys are just lighting up the night with their ghostliness. That's how I want my whole army to look. Alright, now we're ready to do some oil painting. Okay, so I've got a few colors. I've got a yellow ochre. Um, and, you know, it doesn't take much, just a teeny tiny bit. Uh, burnt Umber. It's gonna be a really simple palette. Um, <clears throat> Haynes Gray. You can tell that I use a lot of this color. <laughs> Technical difficulties there, got it open. And last but not least, uh, phthalo green. So next I'm going to take some Overless Mineral Spirits and um, all this is is paint thinner but it doesn't stink like unless you put your nose right up to it you can't actually smell that paint thinner smell. So I'm going to give each one of these its own little bit of paint thinner because I don't really want to mix the colors. And then a little bit in the middle, just in case. And I'm gonna make those really thin. Got these super thin. Uh, I'm gonna use a, a Taclon brush. Taclon is just, it's um, synthetic, it's fishing line, um, but it's, uh, it's good for acrylic and oil paint. They're pretty super durable. So now I'm just gonna put this on all over. And I'm working in this direction. I'm gonna put the, the phthalo green on first. Um, and then, so I'm just kind of slopping it on. I need to actually need a bigger brush. Um, but the, the oil paints, um, you know, like this super, super thin layer is gonna take, um, hours to dry you know so I can just kind of slop it on everywhere and then if I want to later I can uh, dab dab it off like off of the tops of things with a paper towel or like a q-tip or something like that if 
I want to keep my highlights, but then if I just put it on, you know, I can, it, it's a great way to, it's a great thing to use as like a shader to just put um, a shade everywhere. A really, really thin oil wash. Because I do want to put some of that green back into these guys. Like these guys have the green in them, but I want that. I want some of this, you know, some of this green back in here. All right, so this guy is like mostly dry, but you can see how that, you know, that color like it kind of just settles in the recesses. It's pretty subtle when it dries. Um, and then I'm gonna keep working in this direction. Um, so yeah, the, the thing about these, the oil paints is that they do go everywhere. You know, they just kind of run all over the place. Uh, but you know, like it definitely bumps up the, the richness of the color and it kind of defines all the little details and stuff. Under, oil paints are underrated, I think. So now I'm going to keep going this direction and I'm going to use some of this Payne's Gray. And Payne's Gray, it's just like a very dark gray. It, um, it is a gray though, you know, it has some blue in it. I think originally, like the, the people that originally made it, they mix like every color that they had together and that's how they got Payne's Gray or something like that. But you can see like it's great for making shadows. Um, Cause like black is a little bit too black. And then this just has that little bit of blue in it. Um, and it's gonna, you know, it's gonna look great on the stone stuff. Like, especially, you know, around these bases. Slop it on. So the the part of the reason why I did the green first was because I was gonna let it run down, you know, and do its thing, and then this is gonna cover up any of that green that like seeps down onto the stone areas where I don't want it. So let's see, and then I think on these guys I'm gonna try some brown. This is just a just burnt umber. I think, but you can see it does the same thing. It kind of seeps into the dirt, you know, from the pigments and then bumps up the richness of that color. And... I want to keep some of the glow, but then I want to make it, you know, nice and dark in like around the edges and stuff like around my rocks and stuff tombstones get some of this paint gray into these tombstones just want to see how this looks if I put a little bit of yellow nah make some dirty bones I can just use some of this mineral spirits as like an eraser too, you know, to... That's not too bad. Just want to kind of tint these bones a different color and make them a little... like dirty bone looking instead of pristine white buried in the ground looking bones. get some of this uh, yellow kind of stuff, this yellow and this brown, it's a little too watery. So I'm going to make some rust, you know, on these, uh, some iron rust on these, like, great things. Hmm. 
I need to mix up some more brown. So I just want a little bit, oh geez. Just a tiny, tiny bit of like, you know, straight uh, paint <laughs> to work with. Uh, and then I'm gonna start doing some rust with that kind of stuff. in a little bit of this yellow. Sort of blend it around. And that's going to make a nice looking rust later when it dries. Right, so everybody's, you know, pretty dry. Um, I just left them for a few hours. Uh, I suspect that this might still be a little bit wet. Uh, and, you know, if I wanted to, like I could take a Q-tip and then put some mineral spirits on it and kind of rub off the, um, you know, take it off of spots, the, the oil off of spots where I don't want it. But this is, I, I like how this looks. Um, I might come back in later and do some stuff, you know, to kind of, I just do a little bit of dry brushing on these to, uh, yep, came up right there. I might do just a tiny bit of dry brushing on these to get them to look more like rusted steel instead of just a big hunk of rusted iron. Um, but yeah, everybody got the same treatment, um, you know, all of the night haunts. Um, <clears throat> so, one last thing that I want to do is I want to put some static grass tufts on them, like these guys. So, uh, I'm just on these. Mm, yeah. All right. So, I uh, I like to use um, some clear Elmers for this because it just dries um, completely non-gloss and um, clear. And also, um, if you use super glue, you can actually, it can kind of like melt plastic, you know, like it, it heats up some kind of sometimes. So I'm just gonna dip a brush in and then put in some little spots, kind of where I want some grass, and then just let it kind of hang out in some areas, like if there's any boo-boos, any spots where I want to uh, cover up. And then I have this cool, like, dead um, static grass stuff. Yeah, it just looks like a dead grass but definitely looks appropriate for being around a, a night haunt graveyard. And I don't have like a static grass applicator or anything. And, but if you just, if you just go like this, like just blow on it a little bit, you can kind of get it to stand up just by doing that. But like that as just a last little finishing touch and you know like less is more don't need a lot so now I'm gonna uh, varnish everybody and call it good <laughs> 